I believe that it's open to us. I did it with good conscience, with clear revelation before God, not trying to just make it think because I always was against the organization, never would belong to him. But it's open to me now. And I do think another thing, by the opening of this fifth seal in this day, straightens up a doctrine right here that I might speak of. A soul sleeping. Now I realize that there's people in here that does believe that, see, in a soul sleeping. I think this disproves that. Amen. They're not sleeping. They are alive. Amen. Their bodies are sleeping. But the soul, not the grave, they're in the presence of God. Amen. Under the altar. Here is where I differ with a precious brother, a teacher, and I know, I know, I see some of these people sitting here that I realize that this is a great teacher. He's a doctor and a, a doctor of divinity, P H L L D, and he's a he's a real good man too. I think he's gone on at this time, but he was a good man and a good writer. And it's uh, Brother Eura Smith, the author of Daniel Revelations. Now, to you people who are a follower of his teachings, see, now, I don't, I'm not just don't want to say this arrogantly, but I just, see, but uh, Brother Smith, am trying to support, see, am trying to support soul sleeping, there are, he mentions that the souls sleep and there is no altar of sacrifice in heaven. That the only altar spoke of is, uh, he, he believes is in heaven, is the altar of incense. But to you dear people, and not different than my brother, uh, I'll probably hope to meet him on the other side. See. Not different with that great teacher. But just to show you how this disproves that thing. It disproves it. The opening of this seal in this last day. It just takes soul sleeping from out of the way. Amen. They're alive. Amen. They're not dead. Amen. Notice. Notice this now. Now, if there's no altar of sacrifice in heaven, where is the sacrifice for sin land? The land. Amen. There has to be a place where that slaying lamb, bloody, is laying there. Or the blood is... Now, the incense was the odors, odorous stuff that they burnt, which the Bible said was the prayers of the saints. If there isn't no sacrifice on the altar, then the prayers cannot be received. It's only by the blood on the sacrificial altar that lets the prayers go through to God. Amen. Brother Smith is wrong. Not disagreeing with, I think I made myself clear with brotherly love and respect yeah. for his great work. See, but he was wrong. The fifth seal has opened there. Many other things, if you call it. See, I'm waiting for my question. See, but, all right. Now, where was the ark? The slain, wounded, bleeding, bloody lamb for atonement for these odorous prayers. Notice. The Bible says, if this earthly tabernacle of our dwelling be dissolved, we have one already waiting. That's where I see no saint. See? Watch when a baby... Excuse me again, sisters, for this plain talk before young and uh, women. But look, when a mother is, has conceived, and that little bunch of muscles is twisting and jumping, you understand it is a natural body. And just as nature is performing the natural body, did you ever notice your wife before the little ones is born? She always right along the last becomes real kind, sweet. If she hasn't been all her life, she will be then. Do you ever notice how saintly or kind of a feeling you notice a mother? And you see some sinner out there make fun of a mother that's the, a pregnant woman. I think that's ridiculous. That's life coming to the world. But did you notice, around that mother seems to be a sweet feeling. What is it? 
It's a little spiritual body, spiritual life, waiting to come in to that little body as soon as it's born. Now it's only begotten. But when it's born, it's born. The spiritual body unites with the natural body. And then the Bible teaches that we are now begotten of God. We are begotten of the Holy Spirit that in us is Christ, a Son of God, being formed in it. And when this earthly body be dissolved, this spiritual body comes from the bowels of the earth. There is a another body waiting to receive it. If this earthly tabernacle is dropped, there is another body to receive it. This mortal body puts on immortality. This terrestrial puts on celestial. This, see what I mean? There is a natural body that's sinful. But in its making, just like it, is another body that we go to. And I am so grateful to God that I can say as your pastor and brother, I've seen those people, so help me in that body and handle it with my hands. That's right. Notice. Watch. Look at Moses. Elijah. After Moses had died... And Elisha had been taken into heaven. He stood here on Mount Transfiguration with his senses of speech, hearing, understanding, and talked to Jesus before the crucifixion. Now, what kind of body did he have? Look at Samuel. After being dead for about two years, was called back into the cave that night by the witch of Endor. And talk to Saul with language. Heard Saul. Spoke back. And four new things that was going to happen. Still his spirit hadn't changed. He was a prophet. When Elijah's spirit comes upon the man who will drive him just like Elijah. He'll go to the wilderness. He'll love the wilderness. He'll be a hater of immoral women. He'll be against organization. He'll... The pull no punches for nobody, and uh, that's just that, that'll be his spirit. It was each time it comes. See? Moses will be the same person. Now, and we find out in Revelation uh, 22 8, the same thing. Now, are to settle it for those who, those souls, I watch this, under the altar of the breaking of this seal that had been slain in the time between the death of Christ and the going up of the church, the Eichmann group and all that, and true Jews with their names on the book, if you'll watch, my brother, according to the Scripture, they could talk, cry out, speak, hear, and had all five senses. Not sleeping in the grave. Unconscious, they were very much awake and could talk, speak, hear, anything else. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Oh, help us. Two minutes. Amen. I'm sorry I kept you half hour. No, I couldn't. I don't just say that. See? Oh. That's not see. But look, here is to the best of my understanding. The best in according to the revelation that was given me this morning, just before daylight, by the Lord Jesus Christ, there is the open fifth seal to go with the other four. Hallelujah. By His grace, He gave it to me. His grace to you and I. We thank Him for it. And with His help, I intend to live Closer the, as I can live, teaching others to do the same thing until I meet Him with you in glory Amen. when all things are over. Amen. I love Him for this. And it's the best of my knowledge to it. And I truly believe with all my heart that the true revelations of the revealings 
of the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth seal is now open to us. requires judgment of sin. Think of it. His justice and his holiness requires justice. A law without a penalty is not law. And his own laws himself he cannot defy and still remain God. That's the reason God had to become man. He couldn't take a substitute a son that wasn't just an ordinary son to him or something. God became both, Jesus became both son and God. The only way he could justly do it. God had to take the penalty himself. It wouldn't be just to put it upon somebody else, another person. So the person of Jesus was God, manifested in the flesh, called Emmanuel. And to do that, and to take a bride and to save a lost bunch of heathen Gentiles, he had to blind his own children. And then punish them for it in the flesh. For rejection, but his grace provided robes. But the life, see what happened. And if he had to do that in order for us to have a chance, how can we spurn that chance in love. If there is in this building tonight that person, young or old, that has to this time spurned that opportunity that cost God such a price, and you would like to accept that offer to God tonight, that you don't have, as far as we ever know, to be a martyr, though you may be, but a white robe has been provided for you. And if God knocks at your heart now, why not accept it? Now let us bow our heads again. If that person or persons are in here that desires that, I want to accept it upon the basis of your faith in the shed blood that God had to shed for you. Suffered beyond anything that any other mortal, there couldn't have been a mortal being suffer like that. Till his own grief separated his water from his blood in his veins. Before he went to Calvary, drops of blood was coming from his body. With such grief and broken heart that what he had to do, but could have refused it too, but willingly did it. For you and I, can you reject such matchless love? And you see that now by the opening of these seals. That what you have did, and what God has did for you, and you're ready to surrender your life to God, and if He'll snatch you out of the hands of the Antichrist that you're now in, would you accept His offer by just raising your hand to Him, saying, God, by this I signify... I accept that offer of grace. And, Brother Branham, I desire your prayers that I'll ever remain faithful. Raise your hand and I'll pray. God bless you. God bless you. Mean it now. Don't, don't do it unless you mean it. And right where you're sitting, accept it right there. Of course, remember, you could not have raised your hand 
unless something told you to do it. And nothing else could have done it but God. So now when you see the Scripture so perfectly unfolded, you see what's been going on down through the ages, the last few years, 20 or 30 years, you see it perfectly vindicated. You see the Scripture telling exactly what's happened and what's fixing to happen. Then upon the basis of the faith in the work of Christ where you're sitting right now and have raised your hands, say, from this minute on it's settled. I take Christ now for my Savior and I'll live for Him the rest of my life and I desire God to fill me with the Holy Spirit. If you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the pool will be waiting for you. Let us pray. Lord God, there were some great number of hands among the people that went up. I'm sure that you're the very same Lord Jesus that made the atonement for us many years ago and uh, by seeing those seals revealed and the great things that's taken place right here in the last few years, I believe with all my heart that the door of mercy is beginning to close and you're ready to take your journey now to redeem your people. While there is room and a door open as it was in the days of Noah, may these precious souls that lives in the body of this tabernacle that's going to be dissolved someday that raised up that mortal hand, on the inside of them, because of their, their conviction and their profession that they believe and want to accept your proposition to them for salvation on this open, sealed book that's been opened to us. Give to them tonight, Lord, a robe of the righteousness of Jesus Christ and clothe their soul in that that they might stand before you in that day which is close at hand, perfect by the blood of Christ. Lord God, if they have not been baptized into the name of Jesus Christ, and upon the revelation that you give me concerning it, and seeing that Paul commanded people that had even been baptized by John the Baptist to be rebaptized again in the name of Jesus Christ in order to receive the Holy Spirit. In Acts 19, I uh, ask that you'll convince them, Lord, of the truth. And may they obey you. And then in obedience of their acceptance and obedience to their confession and to the water, may you in return... Fill them with the Holy Ghost for power of service the rest of their life. I commit them now to you in the name of the sacrificed Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 commanding of the Spirit that would follow the, the constitution of the Word for a repented sinner. Hallelujah. Follow it in every act and the God of heaven reward you for your stand for Him. Amen. God bless you. Tomorrow night, bring your pencils and papers now as you have been. We expect to be here at the same time at 7.30 Sharp the Lord willing, and uh, pray for me that God will open the sixth seal to me tomorrow, Amen. and I'll be able to bring it to you.
as he gives it to me. Until then, we sing again, not only through hymns, but through praises for him that died in our stead and redeemed him. I love him. Amen.